Good afternoon, everyone. I see that Councillor Wallace is here, Councillor McCauley, the Chief, Hello. Sergeant Hello. Steves, Tony from MVPC, Jamie Tucolo. So I think we are ready to begin. Um, so I'd like to welcome everybody to the December 9 TSAC meeting. We have a very short agenda today, but we can probably afterwards go through the um, old business list and maybe just get a status and all that so that I can clean it up for us and keep open items going for the next month. Um, so I did ask the group, we, we only had a couple of items for today. Um, the first one is going to be a um, short and nice um, informative presentation. I'll let Andy introduce the group, but we've got Minko on the call with us today to talk about the 40 yard development project. So I will do that. I'll turn it over to Andy and then we've got one active item. We'll see if there's anybody here for public comment and then we can go through other business. Andy? Uh, thanks, Donna. Uh, so this is Andy Port, Director of Planning and Development. Um, just for context, uh, we have with us, I'm just gonna uh, allow them to speak to us, uh, Scott Cameron, uh, civil engineer, and Scott Thornton, uh, the traffic consultant for the Minko project. Um, they're gonna speak to the, uh, the plan that you're seeing before you, but uh, just as an update, a reminder, uh, we saw this plan uh, a couple weeks back. The planning board has this project in permitting before it. Um, and the plan you see before you is the last iteration we had of this plan, um, which showed a couple of curb cuts on Route 1. Um, the general concern uh, that was raised, uh, two things in tandem, uh, were traffic, uh, the number of curb cuts and traffic safety and movements um, on one, the one hand and the size of the building or length of it on the other and how that might affect site circulation and um, the contiguous portions of the lot. So uh, that being the case, the applicant has made some revisions and I'll pull up that version of the plan. Um, you can see by comparison, and I think that uh, Scott and um, and Scott will speak to that. Uh, Scott and Scott, would you want to uh, take over comments? I'll pull up the revised plan. Thank you, Andy. This is Scott Cameron. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Perfect. Okay. Um, thanks for setting the table, Andy. Uh, Scott Thornton, uh, also here, uh, who is managing the traffic engineering for this. I'll give you a brief rundown um, and we'll, we'll just go with the current plan, but we're already on, uh, I guess, version 2.0 of the development plan. Uh, the building was shortened by about 50 feet. Um, uh, there were a lot of changes made to the site layout to open it up, create more open space, reduce curb cuts, but I'll walk you through this plan. Uh, so most, most distinctly, the building located centrally on the property, it's kind of an irregular shaped property and uh, the building is designed to fit with that shape. There are gonna be two uh, egress points now down from three. Uh, the primary egress will be Parker Street. We're anticipating a Parker Street address. And that will bring you in uh, to the building and a turnaround. Um, there is uh, 24 parking spaces along that uh, aisle coming in. Uh, you'll see the aisle does have some bends worked into it uh, to make it more of an aesthetic uh, uh, entrance in. Um, however, it was also designed with respect to emergency apparatus. Uh, the new report fire truck can navigate uh, down the road, make the full turnaround and head back out without the need to back up. The uh, garage underneath the building uh, will be entered uh, closer to the Clipper City Rail Trail. So middle point of the building and it's hard to see because the garage uh, ramp will be fully covered and below ground and there will be a green roof on top of that. And that's by design uh, to minimize the uh, visual impact of the structural components of the property. And we get down into the garage, uh, which will accommodate uh, 85 parking spaces below the building. The other access point to the site from the public way is Route 1 uh, on the southbound lane uh, we have consolidated it to a single parking area, uh, and this will serve multiple purposes. Uh, this northerly part will have 16 parking spaces for residents, and then an additional four parking spaces that will be dedicated to uh, retail uh, commercial uh, outbuilding, uh, roughly 850 square feet. Uh, I don't know what the programming is for that building yet, but uh, it could be any number of things uh, that we hope is in support of both the rail trail, pedestrians and bikers on the trail, 
and also in a good spot for uh, vehicular uh, users coming southbound on Route 1. The curb cut on that end of the building is designed, again, for the fire truck to be able to pull in. It is one way and then pull out without having to back up. From a pedestrian perspective, uh, that was a, probably the focal point of all the design is working it around the pedestrian routes. You'll note that uh, Hill Street, which is kind of the top right corner of the plan, uh, there is an existing crosswalk that's lighted that brings you across Route 1. From there, we are going to extend an eight foot wide pedestrian corridor all the way out to the rail trail. And you'll see that distinctively along the southern end of the building, going across the cul-de-sac and then reconstructing um, what is existing kind of like a, a semicircle area near, uh, near the garden. Uh, we're going to rebuild all that up to the main rail trail walk. From there, pedestrians could also head north uh, along Route 1. Uh, there'll be a new sidewalk. There is not one now. This route would bring them up to the retail store. And again, another access point to the Clipper City Rail Trail. Down by Parker Street, uh, there are five parking spaces, including one handicapped space. Those are intended to be uh, flex spaces available to the public to come and park and access the rail trail. Uh, they're not intended really to be for parking and going on the train to Boston. Um, so there may be, I envision a time restriction on them, but that is the intent of those spaces and in the evening hours would be available to residents of the building. Uh, there will be another third connection point to the rail trail up there. The sidewalk on Parker Street is on the south side of Parker Street, not on this side. So that's why we put that connection point. Um, the product itself, uh, Andy said we did uh, reduce the footprint of the building down from roughly uh, 32,000 square feet to 28,500. Uh, it's about 50 feet shorter. There will be a total of 92 apartment units mixed between singles, two bedrooms, and studios. Uh, and then there are 11 three bedrooms as well. And I think uh, aside from that, uh, you can see the open space amenities uh, around the property. Um, I'll turn it over to Scott to talk to you a little bit about his uh, work on the traffic engineering. Yeah, thank you, Scott. Uh, this is Scott Thornton with Vanessa and Associates, and we're working on the traffic study for the projects. Um, and uh, we have, you know, as, as Scott had indicated, um, 92 units uh, is likely to. Um, generate uh, somewhere in the area of about 400 daily vehicle trips and about somewhere in the range of 30 to 35 peak hour trips. Uh, we would expect the majority of those to be uh, uh, utilizing the Parker Street access uh, with only uh, 16 or so spaces uh, up on Route 1. Uh, for residents, we would expect that the, you know, the, relatively small amount of traffic would be utilizing the, the Route 1 curb cuts um, for, the, for the residential building. Um, as Scott indicated, the, the, there is a retail building that's, that's proposed up there and the exact use has not been identified, but it's not likely to be anything intense and you know, nothing like a, like a, um, a Starbucks or, or any of that type of uh, high intensity uh, use there. Um, we have done some initial traffic counts, some speed measurements, uh, the 85th percentile speed on Route 1 southbound in the vicinity of the driveways is about 46 miles an hour. It's, it's posted for 45, so uh, people are probably uh, slowing down as they're, as they're approaching Hill and Parker Street, um, and uh, we, we have uh, we're still conducting research and getting some measurements. We, we feel that, you know, we need to have between 400 and, uh, and 500 or four, about 450 feet of, of sight distance uh, for, uh, for vehicles to be able to exit out of the, those driveways safely without causing any effect to, to the Route 1 southbound traffic flow. We, we feel that we do have that, probably more than that. Um, and... Uh, so we're continuing uh, to prepare the traffic study, uh, 
in addition to the site distance, uh, we're also looking at some um, uh, the operations at the at the Hill Street and uh, Parker Street intersections with Route One. Not that there's a whole lot of uh, conflicting traffic there, and it does seem to be that the, the traffic volumes are not that substantial. Uh, we did collect some pedestrian data at the intersection of Hill and, uh, and Route 1, and uh, about half a dozen pedestrians uh, during the morning peak hour crossing Route 1, and uh, a higher number, about, uh, about 15 or so, are crossing in the evening peak hour. So there's, there's some, uh, some level of pedestrian activity there. The pedestrian equipment is in uh, operating condition. It does show all the, the proper indications uh, and, is, and works when, uh, when it's uh, activated by the push buttons. We have had some preliminary discussions with, uh, with DOT. Uh, they've been, um, uh, uh, as you know, they're working on the, uh, the the uh, traffic circle project, converting it to a uh, roundabout. Um, and that while that work is uh, expected to, the limit of that work is slightly south of uh, the Hill Street uh, intersection uh, and doesn't really affect the work that we're doing with our project. Uh, it is something that we're, that we're, we've been discussing with them and, um, and uh, uh, continue to coordinate with them on. So I think that's, you know, we're, we think that the project is in, um, is in a, a good location to take advantage of the, the multiple modes of transportation that are available. Um, we'd like to get, uh, see if we can get some data on the, uh, the nearby uh, residential building that's, that's closer to the, to the commuter rail station to try to get an idea of of uh, what type of traffic uh, or what type of uh, usage uh, of the of the commuter rail stop those residents enjoy, uh, we expect that this this site would generate uh, similar levels of of uh, commuter rail usage as well as you know usage of the of the pedestrian and and bicycle modes on the rail trail, um, but I think that's. You know, we're as I mentioned, we're continuing to work on the traffic study. We expect to have that pulled together shortly, um, and uh, I think that's I think that's it. That's that's an update for the traffic situation. I don't know, Scott, if there's anything else to add, or we can just turn it back over to the city. No, I think the only thing I'd like to add is that the um, and if you go back to the black and white plan at the northerly end of the property, there's kind of a long strip that is a mix of. Uh, some mature trees, but a lot of uh, kind of brush and overgrowth that that's obstructing some of the view corridor on Route One. Uh, so we did add into this version of the plan uh, some selective clearing and grubbing in that area to minimize, uh, you know, for, a to protect the trees, but b to improve the sight distance uh, on that driveway coming in. Uh, so I just want to identify that as well. Um, Scott and Scott, thanks for providing an overview. Uh, I'm going to uh, obviously toss it back to Donna as chair and, and the rest of the committee. Uh, one thing I would note, um, just having been involved with the review of this plan with the planning board and then here, of course, is um, the concern or question that was raised was the uh, ability of vehicles to, uh, to enter the site here without getting rear-ended, if you will, and being able to pull in one of those spaces. Um, so I just wanted to, to highlight that that was one of the, the questions or concerns that was raised previously when we saw an earlier schematic of this. Yeah. So, so, did a couple. Okay. Um, go ahead. No, I, I was just going to say so. So noted, and uh, you know the 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 as as Scott indicated, the 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 plan is uh, has has shifted and is um, sort of a um, um, has been updated. There may be some additional modifications that can be done to uh, to increase awareness for uh, for vehicles pulling into. The uh, or pulling out of the parking spaces with the in the vicinity of that entrance driveway, correct? Um, do I, 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 I think a few folks had their hands raised. Questions, comments, Councillor to Donahue, Councillor to be. 
Thank you. Um, I still haven't figured out where the raise hand icon is uh, yeah. when uh, when you're a panelist. Um, so thank you for noticing that I did that. Um, I popped on just a couple minutes late, so I apologize if I missed this in the beginning. Um, is there going to be sidewalks that are connecting this development to that intersection on Low Street? I mean, I'm sorry, on um, Route 1 where it crosses to the bottom of Hill Street, you know, where it's Lower Hill Street, like Parker Street to Lower Hill Street, and then that button that crosses over to the rest of Hill Street. Um, is that going to be made pedestrian friendly or is that you know, at all um, part of the plan or been talked about because, um, you know, right now people just cut through the parking lot of the business that's there because there's nowhere to walk. Um, and um, yeah, like I said, I apologize if I missed the beginning and if that was explained at all, um, but I would like to hear if, if that is part of the plan at all. Um, and even though I think this is actually Ward 3, if I'm not mistaken, um, I do live right down on Cherry and I used to take that crossing to commute and I'm pretty familiar with, um, you know, the dangers there and, um, you know, some of the traffic flow. And uh, I'm actually surprised to hear this study came back with, you know, sort of like light traffic flow. Um, because in my experience, I mean, we live in the neighborhood and it's, you know, a speedway. Um, but anyway, uh, that's, I guess that's it for now. <laughs> Thank you. Scott, do you want to, or Scott or Scott, do you want to address, just summarize <laughs> again what you're doing at each of those locations uh, and, and to the extent that there's any um, connections being made? So uh, yeah, so so Scott from VAI here. Um, the the project is proposing to uh, have pedestrian sidewalks along the frontage and along the adjacent property. Uh, the, we don't control the property uh, to the south, so the the so we don't, and and that's the property that actually has that last stub or last section of roadway that abuts Route One. Uh, between our parcel and uh, the, the intersection with Hill Street. So, you know, we can, we can make, um, you know, it's, I mean, we don't control that. So, so we can make the, um, make the sidewalk available on our side of the, of the property line. Um, but, you know, I, we would be, we would, you know, someone would have to, to um, uh, get the, a butter to uh, install that that other piece of sidewalk to be able to have that connection. Uh, Scott Cameron, did you want to add anything to that? Uh, no, I think Scott Horton covered covered it. I we um, we did take a close look at that stretch, and you know, I I will never. Have the experience of living in the neighborhood, uh, like like the counselor, but uh, I have spent a great deal of time sitting and on the site. Um, the the route we have on the south end of the building, although we've straightened it out, that is the primary. What I've observed of people walking to the rail trail. Um, I can't say if they're trying to get to the train station, they might cut through Hill Street, but with the winding um, and really making that eight foot wide pressuring quarter. Uh, a visible and obvious route from the lighted intersection. And it's it's our intention and hope that that becomes the route to the rail trail. Um, and we really don't wanna be pushing pedestrians down to that corner on Hill Street. The whole, uh, frankly, in my opinion, that the intersection itself is part of a bigger probably uh, project uh, in the future to, to slow down that intersection, but it's not, not part of the plans for this project right now. Okay, okay, fair enough. Um, and I will just say, you know, in terms of studies, um, you know, people have their roots that are what they are because that's what's available. But I always like to just sort of remind folks that like when it comes to access and sidewalks, if you build them, they will walk on them. <laughs> so, but I understand it's not, uh, you know, sort of like applicable in this, you know, for that particular stretch, um, but thank you. 
Okay. Does anybody else have any comments or, or questions? This will be I mean, on. Don't I do see a hand raised in the audience once you get done with the committee members. Yeah, I actually could add one more thing real quick. Um, just sort of wearing my my disability commission hat. Um, has PROAG been looked at at all by uh, the developers, like, for, you know, and sort of um, consulted for the outdoor walking space areas? Because I know that they're not, you know, the outdoor space areas are not addressed by ADA, um, you know, our Massachusetts Architectural Access Board, uh, you know, laws, but, uh, you know, PROAG is the guideline for outdoor spaces with accessibility and ADA. So I'm just sort of wondering if, um, you know, you're going to try to sort of do the right thing and have those outdoor shared spaces, uh, you know, sort of meet the guideline standards at least, um, because that, you know, eventually those standards will be law and it's just a matter of, you know, creating an inclusive development rather than an exclusive one and being proactive with new builds. So I just, um, if you could speak to that for, you know, just real quick, um, you know, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not talking about, you know, your, your mandated ADA standards. I know that that's of course not a question. Um, this is more of like, you know, have you looked at, uh, you know, what's not necessarily spelled out, but is, um, you know, more universal design, if that makes sense. Yeah, uh, uh, this is Scott Cameron. I can, I can speak to that. The, um, uh, we, to, to directly respond to it, no, we haven't gone uh, on a deep dive yet into additional accessibility. I will say that this project is designed in full compliance with the MAAB accessibility uh, regulations. And if you if you've have had a chance to look at One Boston Way, which is complete also by this applicant, uh, you'll you'll find pretty quick that accessibility is is a, a very key part of their their project um, execution uh, on that particular project. Also on Three Boston Way, uh, Mako Corporation undertook a very expensive and exhaustive um, accessibility review uh, using consultants that specialize in that type of work. Um, and all of those comments were incorporated into the construction documents for that project. So it would be my full expectation that uh, the property would be fully accessible, all the open space areas. Um, you know, and I could just point out the uh, ability to take a, you know, as far as a walkability, a wheelchair around both the one and three Boston Lake buildings was not easy. Um, there was quite a considerable grade change around those buildings, uh, some very expensive ramps, railings, and other systems put in to ensure that uh, somebody wasn't pigeonholed into taking a certain route that was inconvenient uh, for them and nobody else because they couldn't use stairs. So uh, I think it's something that is very uh, much on the forefront of Minko's business initiative and something I would expect to see. Great. Okay, thank you so much. No, that's that's all really wonderful to hear. Um, you know, every developer is a little bit different and you know, when I get the chance, I'd just like to ask. So thank you so much. Um, Don, I do see Rick Tainter's raised his hand in the audience to say no. Joe, yep, John, go, John Eric. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Donna. Um, I just want to provide some comments just for the record. And Scott, the um, this is a, a better improvement, uh, much better improvement over the, um, the last layout. Um, as Andy was saying, the off, you know, the southbound traffic on Route 1 uh, turning off of Route 1 onto um, the area by the entrance by the identifier G. The curvature is good. So I'm going to wait for a mass DOT to make comments on that. I think this will be fine. They may want some kind of deceleration lane. Um, I'm not, um, I'll defer to them. I'll also defer to them for reviewing the traffic study first. So Vanessa said that they're going to finish the traffic study send it off to them. Um, definitely circulate it with the city, obviously. Andy, if you can send me a copy, that'd be great. Um, I'm not overly concerned with traffic on this project, just for people to, um, you know, if anyone's curious about the overall volumes. Um, I am interested in how this, pro the projections for this project 
fits in with the existing one and three Boston Way with Parker Street um, and the new the, the new rotary design that um, that DOT is doing. Because overall, um, at, at some point, a particular project is going to probably warrant some changes to Route One. So I'll wait for the traffic study to come out for that. I'd like to see some breaks in the guardrail at Parker Street and, and some reconstruction of Route One in that regards. Uh, but for this particular project, I don't have any any issues. I just wanted to um, I'll defer for the uh, Mass DOT's review of the traffic study first. Uh, this is Andy Port. Of, I, I don't have any ability to raise my hand. Sorry, the, as a host. Um, uh, just to follow John Eric's comment, one thing I would note is, and uh, I think John Eric's fully aware of this and others may not be, but uh, the rotary portion of the Route 1 project, they are planning on essentially tapering the two lanes into one, uh, both coming in and out of the rotary. Um, and so it also should be noted, Jordy and I had a conversation the other day about uh, the Mass DOT plans for striping uh, during as part of that roadway project um, and approaching uh, the Gillis Bridge. And in essence, they're doing a tapering at both ends uh, with some of the striping that they're doing uh, as you go up onto the bridge on a go forward basis to, to narrow it down to one lane. Um, so uh, that uh, with that possibility in play, uh, you know, to John Eric's point, there might be the ability to work on a, a deceleration lane, um, you know, in that area. But um, again, like we said, we're interested in hearing what the District 4 Office of Mass DOT has to say in relation to that, um, that turnoff. And, and Scott Thornton, um do you, I mean, you don't suspect that you're going to change the phasing of the Pond Street traffic signal, are you? Because the queuing, the northbound left lane queuing onto Pond to get into the site, to your site, um, you know, that queuing lane is pretty long. It's, I don't see, I, I can't envision that you're going to make any, recommend any changes to that, are you? Do you? No, 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 no. And John, uh, I, uh, good to see you again, by the way. Um, I don't. I don't think that we're going to recommend any changes to the phasing there. The, um, uh, it you know that, that with the flash and yellow arrow and the protected phase, it seems to work pretty well. Uh, traffic waits a minimum of of uh, as a minimum of delay associated with that northbound left turn into Hill. So, you know, I, it it seems to operate pretty good. This is again, this is not a a, a large development um, generating, you know, a hundred a hundred vehicle trips uh, right. in in an hour. So so we wouldn't we wouldn't expect to make any changes. I I do um, although the although the uh, the pedestrian uh, crossing equipment is in operation, it's not. Up to current standards, so I, I would expect that we would make some um, that we would make some recommendations towards uh, updating that equipment for uh, you know for for ADA compliance and, um, and and you know we have had some preliminary discussions with DOT um, and you know they indicated that um, you know and and Andy's right that the that the the change is they, they are uh, taking or, or narrowing Route One to to one lane southbound, just just south of Hill Street. But yeah. uh, they did not indicate that 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 at this point that they would uh, be extending that work up past uh, past Hill Street or or north of Hill Street. Yeah. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I think that um, you know probably. You know the the development is is not likely to uh, to really result in a in a significant um, you know significant change in traffic patterns uh, at these intersections or on Parker Street or on Route One South. Yeah, that's what I would suspect. I used to live over there. And I took the Hill Street. Um, you know, we used, we used the pet signals all the time for crossing the road, and um, you know, improving them for for the modern technology. That's good. But yep. your new sidewalk for, you know, the identifier E to uh, Jenny Donahue's uh, question about, um, you know, getting access to the access to the bike path. I like this a lot. Uh, I used to walk through that parking lot all the time. So this is a good, a good change. Anyone that's going to the commuter rail, yeah, they might still might cut through the, that private property, but at least this new sidewalk gives them the, the, a means of getting over there 
without feeling feeling like you're trespassing through through someone's uh, property. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's all I have, um, Donna. Yeah. Okay. Great. All right, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, and I'm sure we'll be doing more updates as time goes by. Um, Donna, did, did you want to uh, entertain a question from Rick Tainter in the audience on that? Oh, I'm sorry. I did not see. Is he there? Uh, Rick, did you want to chime in there? Yeah, just a very brief thing. And before I do, uh, Andy, I want to ask you whether you have any concerns about me talking outside of the planning board process. Uh, no, I don't. I, 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 it's a fair question there, um, but I, understandably, your questions here are going to be uh, understood as just one member of the board and an uh, individual here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's not really a question. It's more an observation, and it relates to the, uh, the sidewalk connection to Hill Street. I was building on what Jenny uh, said and, and what John Eric said a little bit ago. Um, I've noticed that, that southbound cars on Route 1 uh, don't necessarily stop when the pedestrian signal is on, they they just continue right with hardly slowing down at a hill street. And I think that's probably because of the obtuse angle there. It's very easy to make that turn. I, actually, last week I was actually in the crosswalk uh, on my bike when a car just <laughs> totally ignored that went right onto hill street. Um, so I guess in quite, one of the things that I would uh, think, and I understand this is really a concept plan, it's not an engineering design at this point. One of the things that might be explored and it might be a mass dot responsibility um, rather than anything else is to um, make the area where the crosswalk is a little you know, make it more of a, a bulb out so it's more of a right turn into hill, hill street rather than a uh, a swooping turn um, just just that that observation that there's a there seems to be a safety issue there right now and you know maybe the maybe upgrading the traffic signals as scott said uh, the, uh, the the pedestrian crossing signal would um, help solve that, but just, just a, an observation of existing conditions. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. And and I would, um, you know, there, there, I would say there may be some some signage that can be added to 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 kind of uh, discourage that type of behavior, um, and uh, and that's that's something that I'm sure we would we would be asked to look at by DOT. Okay. Don't mean to butt in real quick before you end. One more thing. Um, I just, I heard APS unit at that um, cross site at the bottom of Hill. And I just wanted to, you know, let you guys all know, cause um, you haven't all been here for, you know, as long as I've been pushing, but um, I have been pushing for about 10 years to get an APS unit at that crosswalk um, and to get that light updated to ADA compliance. Um, and there's always been the back and forth because it's state property and okay, well, they, you know, they give the city permission to do it, but then the city never paid to do it. Um, and if, if this can facilitate that light getting fixed, um, and brought up to ADA standards, that would really be, um, a win, um, for the APS units that we have only two of in the entire city. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, comment on that. And, and um, you know, if, if anything uh, comes up where they need any kind of um, direction on, you know, the, the absolute proper installation and, and the way that those are supposed to be done, um, you know, please have them reach out to the Disability Commission or the Mass Office on Disability because a lot of the times when those polls get redone and the APS units get done, they don't get orientated properly and then that creates a problem. Um, and that's actually like the number one thing that gets missed in installation is the orientation of the, you know, the, the button and the arrows and things like that. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, make sure those details get covered and, um, really just just remind everybody that that's actually pretty significant and um you know thank you thank you okay thank you gentlemen i think that's everybody that is okay okay so the next item onto the agenda is not really a new item we did start talking about the river valley charter school but i believe that john eric has some updates he's just recently met with the school and i'm not sure i don't see that she's on 
John Eric, but maybe you can give us an update on some ideas we're thinking about for the traffic issues down there. Sure. Um, and just for the record, we do have, uh, it looks like Joni and uh, Dan from the oh, Charter yeah. School. Oh, great. Okay. Perfect. Welcome, and Joni. John Eric, just advise if there's any, I have this on the graphics you wanted, so just advise what you'd like to have up. Sure. Um, yeah, so uh, Donna, you're exactly right. So I forgot to invite Joni Lynn to the, um, to, the, to, the, to the first meeting that we had a month ago. But the good news for her is that the first meeting we just, um, it barely made the agenda because uh, we had um, technical difficulties and we almost canceled the meeting anyway. So Joni, Joni Lynn, uh, you didn't miss anything on that one. So Andy, if you can call up um, the sketches and um, call up the pictures in the folder that I sent you to. Let's start with the, um, this intersection right here, the sketch right here. Andy, stay there, please. So um, if you ignore the proposed work, if you just look at the intersection, just to get uh, everyone oriented, um, you know, every school morning and afternoon has their drop off and pick up traffic issues. Um, River Valley is no different than any other school. Um, this particular layout of the, the way that their driveway is with Perry Way, um, the biggest concern we have is not so much in the morning, it's mostly in the afternoon. So um, in the afternoon, there's, they queue on Low Street and then they take a right onto Perry. They circulate around the building. This Google Maps, you can actually see the cars driving around the building. They're, they're, they're in line around the building. Um, so this Google Maps is actually a good uh, representation. Um, the queuing is so long that it blocks the sight distance for people pulling out of Perryway. And the volumes of Perryway are the, the actual parents picking up their kids. Um, DPS employees, you know, there's not many of us down here. I work at, at the DPS facility at the end of the cul-de-sac. You know, we'll have like 20 cars leaving at three o'clock. That adds to it. What also adds to it is the uh, bakery across the street. Um, their shift is a little bit later, but sometimes they leave at this time. But nonetheless, three o'clock is a nightmare. So everyone knows this intersection. So Andy, if you can go to the pictures. And hopefully um, people on TSEC have had an opportunity to look at it at three o'clock. Um, let's start with the JPEGs first, Andy, and then we'll do the video. Might be just a little easier, that's all. Sure, are you able to see the, the first video there, the first image? Is this a, a JPEG or a video? Is that the beginning that's of JPEG. the video or is that JPEG? JPEG, yeah. Okay, so yeah, just go through the, just go through the JPEGs. These are pretty self-explanatory. I just want to set the stage for everyone to look at. That's all. John Eric, I'm going to chime in while you, while while Andy's going through those. Uh, this is Jamie Tuckalo, DPS. Um, Before you go there, uh, Andy, can you uh, Jamie? Can you hold on one second? Sure. Can I just finish this, Jamie, and then you jump jump in? Absolutely. Yep. Okay. Um, so this one here is your absolute typical. I'm standing. I took the pictures two days ago. I'm standing at where my car, any car would normally, I got out of the car to take the pictures. I'm standing where a normal person pulling out uh, would be sitting in their car looking in this direction in order to pull out. The, the queuing for the cars going in, you just, you can't see the car. Obviously we can see that um, silver car much better, but it, it, when they're going, 20 miles an hour, you can't, you have no room to see. So that this should be self-explanatory. They block the view. Next JPEG, please. This is your typical situation. It's an absolute nightmare um, with the cars actually just, um, they're, they're in extreme careful mode, hopefully, because there's so much going on. You have the, cro the crossing guard letting people go by. You have cars that just pass through the kids walking next JPEG. 
and it just keeps getting worse um, because what happens is when the kids are crossing, all of us pull out at this intersection and we try to make our maneuver while the kids are over there crossing. So if you can flip to the next one. That might be the last one, Andy. So you can go to the uh, video, Andy. Yeah, sorry, I just opened up the video, but the uh, the audio was blocking me for a second. Just hang on one second. Um, so yeah, the, the next things are actually uh, video clips. I'm gonna uh, display those. Um, so hang on just one second. Yeah. In the video, we don't need the audio for the video, if that's what you're talking about, but uh, yeah, just the video. Yeah, sorry for the delay. The uh, the video app was taking up the whole screen and not uh, something that people could see. So hopefully you can all see this image now. Um, so I'm going to hit play and you'll be able to see a little clip. Uh, there's two of these that John Eric had. I started the video. That's that's actually one of that's Tony's car. He pulled up while I was videotaping. So it, there's a lot of cars that take a left up Johnson at the same time, which actually adds to the massive confusion. Then you have, you know, the bus pulling in, which is quite large. He has to maneuver between the, the space that he maneuvered between the people pulling out and the, and the queuing. Um, you know, it's pretty tight. The queuing goes into the driveway and it goes around the, around the school. Um, that's pretty self explanatory as far as understanding. Uh, the cars, um, this particular vantage point, there's not many cars queuing up in the next video, we have a lot more. So people are generally just, you know, trying to get in. So you can see the queuing length there, it goes pretty far. And you can jump on to the next one if you wanna just go ahead. The next video, um, thanks for your patience, everyone. The next video is a little bit better. It gives you a better idea of the conflicts because um, trust me, there's a lot of conflict. So this is a typical scenario where the queuing link down the end is quite long. So you got kids walking all over the place. Uh, they're crossing low, but they're also crossing Johnson. And when they cross Johnson in cars while they're crossing, right here while they're crossing, cars will go up Johnson. And I'll show that in a second because the kids will queue up waiting to cross the street. And the cross guard waits until a whole bunch of kids show up and then she lets them go. This car pulling out is going to just you know, keep edging in, and right here, they just done it. See, now, now that she stopped. Now there's a guy across the street trying to penetrate. Now, the crossing guard let everyone go. So now right here, this is a typical action where everyone's trying to, okay, who, who's letting who go? Um, I'm hoping this video uh, doesn't have it. There's a lot more conflicts. Yeah, sorry about that. There's a lot more conflicts than... Um, I thought I had better conflicts. So John, but there's always there's always there's always a, a near miss. What? So if you go to the sketches, I have a, this is just a an idea I have for discussion purposes, and it's essentially a driveway off Low Street, a one way in. There's a culvert there. You know, constructability wise, I'm not going to bore you to death on that. But there's wetlands in, in a culvert. I think we can go over the culvert um, and miss the head wall by about five feet. But essentially, we can make this a narrow driveway, cars only, heading in. Um, and what that does, it eliminates the sight distance issue. So have a no parking, no standing zone between the driveway and Perryway. That's critical. Um, the bushes right there, we got to get um, Jamie's guys to take those bushes down. It's technically the River Valley property, but I'm sure they'll, they won't argue. Um, 
And for the record, uh, River Valley has been very helpful with all this. Uh, this is the beginning of discussion. We just, it's, it's, it's reached a critical mass with, uh, probably because of COVID, who knows, but there's just a lot more cars and everyone's still, um, you know, so we're, we're at a point where we just need, need, to, need, to, need to do something. If you go to the next sketch, Andy. So the only other thing I have, um, I know this is an old one. Go to the next one. Um, it should be. A uh, that's two. the only other one I have, John Eric. Is that right? That's the only other one I have. Yeah, this one. This one here. This is good. Okay. okay so if you zoom down below with the pa the pavement markings on Perry Way, this is very basic. Perry Way weighs very wide. We don't even, we might not even have to widen it with asphalt. We might be able to just put on some markings. And this is just a down and dirty, even paving markings might help delineate on-street parking with, with a five foot walking path, because that'll help out a lot. If, if, you, um, if you zoom in, those cars on busy days, they go halfway down Perry Way. And um, that in and of itself is also an issue. It's not so much an issue with the drop off, but it's just a, it's a separate issue with everything. Um, so collectively, both Perry Way and then the Low Street intersection, we got to come up with some ideas. Um, so this is just one way of doing it. Um, I'd like to start a conceptual design phase and start working with River Valley and with anyone else in the city that um, uh, you know, we have to meet with the knock school. Their their timing is they get out sooner, so um, I don't, you know, I'm not so sure that they the timing of them impacts the um, timing of the River Valley, but uh, maybe maybe we'll meet with them. And I, and I, Jamie, I'm going to turn it over to you. you. You said you had some things that you want to talk about as far as circulation that you brought to the attention of River Valley. Yeah, so so thanks. And um, again, I, I've, been, I, I've worked with Dan uh, Bouchard, and, and they've been very receptive. I mean, he put signs up on the side of the road. They're, they're doing everything they can do. What I wanted to say to everybody is, and John Eric, I do agree with you that, that a lot of this is COVID-related because they had to change their, their drop-off patterns. They've had to change their pickup patterns. What you're not seeing, or it, it doesn't depict on these these pitches, is is you know inclement weather. You have to realize that when it snows out, those cars are going to be on Low Street because the the where they're parked right now will be that's where we put the snow. Um, it's going to be it's going to get it's going to get hairy. Um, as far as Perry Way goes, you have five ton, ten ton truck, wing trucks going up and down that road. There is no place, in my opinion, to put. Um, it, it it needs to be looked at. Um, it, it's it's a very dangerous situation. Um, the three o'clock hour that John Eric is talking about that in itself is an issue. And then my issue on top of that issue is is literally we haven't hit, you know, the the, the mean green winter um, months where you know if there are storms, yes, you won't have school that day, but when we clear the snow, the piling on the side of the road, because like John Eric said earlier, that it does go from Perry Way, the cars do go down all the way to the Armory. I mean, they, they, they're, they're far. Um, and that, unfortunately, you're going to run out of room to put the cars on the side of the road, which means they're going to hedge more onto Low Street, which is going to pose more of an issue. That's so are I'm you thinking. agreeing with him? Is that what I'm hearing? I'm agreeing with the there should not be any parking on Low, on low Street, or standing, I should say, period. I don't. I, I personally think they should reroute and come down Perry Way, park on the side of Perry Way, and do what they're doing, just reversed. That's my opinion. Can you say that again? Sorry, this is Johnny Lynn from River Valley. Hi, Johnny Lynn. My, my, my opinion would be opposite of what you're doing now. So you guys line up on Low Street, you come down Perry Way, and then you do your you know your circle around the school. Yep. Why? Not? inadvertently have them go down Perry way, turn around and then park like they do on the, like on the picture that we're looking at right now on the left-hand side of the road or the right-hand side of the road. And then you do, you know, 10 cars or 15 cars at a turn. There should be a, a, a detail out there. Direct, yes. Right there. 
directing traffic, um, which Dan and I actually have, Dan Bouchard and I actually spoke about, um, like they like they sometimes do in, 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 in the other schools, like on Low Street, either there should be a, a cruiser or something that's going to help with the unloading of the school, the work, and the bakery all at the same time during normal everyday weather. When you yeah. throw in rain, snow, sleet, and visually it's impacted to begin with, and now you throw in all of those cars on Low Street, it's 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 gonna it's gonna turn, and that's when people's blood starts to boil. Because John Eric's right. I mean, I punch it all the time trying to get out of there because you can't see. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Jenny. Um, John Eric, it's a funny thing that I didn't tell you when you called me this afternoon. We actually got a call from a parent that there was a strange person lurking around and taking pictures of their children. So you clarified for us. That was uh, me. <laughs> who it was. Yeah. So thank you. Um, I will tell you, long ago, um, when the school first opened, we did go down. We had people drive in turn around at the end of Perry Way, which is now a, a heliport, I believe, for the hospital, drive back up Perry Way. And then we had someone situated right about where it says exit, you know, the entrance into our driveway. And they would bring cars in five, 10 at a time, whatever it is. And we actually turned around in front of the building before. Um, so this turning around and driving around the building was a, a big improvement because we got so many of the cars off the road. Um, I, I wonder even if the, if the heliport weren't there and we were able to go back down, um, and turn around down the end, how that would help for, uh, the DPS crews when they're leaving, because they're going by there really fast. Um, and now we would have traffic turning left into there. Yeah, it wouldn't it wouldn't really help DPS as far as um, you know flow of traffic um, pedestrian and, and, and just like during events. What it will eliminate is is the the cluster problem that's going to end up on Low Street. So I mean, it's a, it's a it's a double edged sword. And again, I, I think that we you know we start the conversation now, and and there probably is no good solution um, that we can you know, mock up in 10 minutes, but it, it warrants the start of a conversation, you know, the start of a plan. And I, I have to say, I'm like super appreciative of this because we have been, it, it, it has been made worse by COVID. There's a whole bunch of components to that. Parents used to like to walk their kids into the school and come into the school, but we don't allow them in because of COVID. So there's more people who are driving, et cetera. Um, and the parking issue has been a big issue for us. And again, that's also impacted by COVID. Um, we reached out to the armory next door and said, hey, is there any way that some of our staff members could park in your parking lot during the day and just cross over? Um, that was a no-go. So we've, we've been trying to think of solutions too, and we definitely want to work collaboratively with everybody. Um, but I'll have to say, this is not my area of expertise, you know, from a creativity traffic flow uh, standpoint. Yeah, Johnny. Uh Johnny Lynn, as far as you know, you claim that this isn't your area of expertise. Um, if we work with the other school, both of them, the Brez and the, uh, the Knock Mullen, um, the drop-off pickups, they schools have mastered it. So if we can if we can tap into the right person over there, um, personally, you know, we we've always favored um, queuing on Perry Way. I threw the driveway in to, for discussion purposes. Um, if you can make it work in queue on Perry Way, um, you will need help to get cars in and then circ circ you know, circulate around. We need two crossing guards or, or one, one crossing guard on low and then one traffic directing person um, at that entrance there. Yeah. But, but the helicopter pad down the end, and I actually haven't driven down there, I don't, doesn't that interfere with that whole idea of turning around down there? But that'll be short-lived. The, the helicopter pad, I believe. I mean, Chief was about to speak. Sorry, but uh, Chief, is that almost complete at the uh, at the hospital? Isn't it, isn't yeah. it almost done? Yeah, the helipad on Perry Way is temporary, so uh, I don't have a, a sure date on that. But their construction at the hospital is continuing. So uh, again, that'll be short-lived. So don't let that be a deterrent to uh, solving this issue. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. 
The other thing that Jamie brought up a good point about snow, um, the queuing on low is definitely not desirable. This is, this is again, a repeat. Um, this sketch is a, it just to start the conversation. And, and obviously it, it, it achieved that. Especially if we start uh, renovating 157 low, um, that's just gonna be another, uh, you know, uh, location for more, more cars. It might be youth, it might be someone else. So what I like to do is what I propose here, Donna, is mm -hmm. simply to get um, to get all the parties involved, start some discussion. Um, I'd, it'd, it'd be nice if we can grab someone from the other schools that have really mastered drop off and pick up. I don't know who those people could be. Um, obviously, we'll get Jamie, myself, fire police, if fire police wants to at the initial stage, but. Um, Widening of uh, or some, you know, reconstruction of Perryway, some kind of roadway work will be will be will be needed, and that's where I can come in. I can offer up some help on that. We can do some sketches. Yeah. Um, but we don't need to extend this this meeting any longer. I think what I like to do is just get it started. Start it. Everybody's thoughts on that. I think. You know, we have a new administration coming into, and this will be a long process. And we start talking about putting in driveways or doing construction of any kind, it becomes a bigger thing, right? So, well, we're uh, all in favor. I think we're all in favor of this. Favor. Getting them off Low Street is yeah. the right way to do it. So, moving along, we, I think, unless there's any objection to creating a better plan, which I can't imagine there would be, we can move on to something else. The only other issue for us is that the, the window has to be long because, from a financial side, as a public school with a set, you know, annual income, figuring out how we're going to fund something like this would be something that would take a lot of planning. Right. Absolutely. And and you know, hopefully, all you know, this is all in collaboration with the city, so we need to look at it as a great as a group effort. We're okay. All so we go ahead. I said we're all about collaboration. Thank you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so more. we'll do that. We'll convene a group, John Eric. This can go, um, yep. you know, in the plan for the beginning of the year, right? To start a get a group together and start, I guess, separately meetings and let's get a kickoff meeting, so to speak, going and then at the beginning of the year and go from there. But, but and Johnny and Dan, I assume you'd participate or somebody you'll have a representative for yourself. Yeah, from yeah, the school. Absolutely. Okay. Um, Donna, before you finish, I do have one more question. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't want to shut this meeting down that quick. Um, is anyone on the TSAC or anyone in this meeting? Uh, do they? Any of you people have any questions on, um, you know, the queuing cars parking on Johnson? I mean, um, I don't have a good handle on the people that are parking on Johnson. Um, Johnny Lynn, are they uh, parking there mainly for you to? You know, I see a lot of. I see a lot of. I do see moms crossing low street to pick up their kid and then they're walking back. I don't follow them. I think they're going to the car that's parked on Johnson. Someone said that there's other cars that park towards this, uh, somewhere else uh, down low. Does anyone have any comment on, on the overall? Uh, um, sorry, sorry to interject. This is Andy. I just, Donna as chair, I just defer to you, but I just wanted to note the time of five o'clock and mm -hmm. Jimmy and I both have to be at the disabilities commission. I uh, just wanted to note that. Yeah. I, th I think John Eric, we we need to convene the group, make a plan for January, and and, and go forward. I wasn't sure if I um, had any comments for now. That's all. Okay. Counselors, good. Okay, all right. So that's so that's that'll be the plan. We'll we'll pick this up in January, and we'll convene a group, and we'll we'll go forward. Okay. And it is five o'clock, so we had a quick, you know, I'm adding on these old items. So thank you, Johnny and, and um, Dan, for participating in the meeting. We're going to go on to old Thank business. you very much. John, you're welcome to stay or listen in or we'll be in touch. Happy Thanks. holidays. So we can Thanks, go guys. quickly. I believe Councilor Wallace and, and Councilor McCauley are on the call. We don't have to go through every item. Um, I just had, you know, the running list, so to speak, um, and I can do it quickly if everybody's good with that, and then we can we can adjourn. Um, or if anybody has any comments right out front on anything that was on the agenda, does anybody want to speak first, or I'll just quickly run through. 
Uh, this is Andy again. I don't have anything. I just wanted to know. I, I have to host the five o'clock for the Disabilities Commission. So I just thought oh. we could, again, that was, we okay. had talked about previously the time. Yeah. So I just want to make sure we're not running into an issue for the other commission. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All right. So I'll go quick. Um, item number one, Jefferson Street Calming. We had a, a, a good discussion on that with Councilor Wallace and we had resident Dan Sawicki involved. Um, I think we've decided we're going to make that a project for the spring. Um, so I just kept it hoping. I didn't know if anything happened since. Uh, no, nope. keep it open. Okay. And the next item being, um, I think we were going to look at the crosswalk at Merrimack and Butler. I think the counselor, John Eric, we were going to do a site visit. Oh, it hasn't project. shown up yet. Um, okay. I can I can shoot Jamie a note um, if that's possible, but I'll, I'll take care of it offline. Okay, good. We'll keep it open. Um, number three was um, a review of the intersection of Pond Street and Greenleaf. I think we all agreed. I mean, the stop signs are there. Um, it's an enforcement issue. Um, I did make note of what the resident had concerns about with speeding and, and witnessing some car accidents. But I think at this juncture, I'll close it and, and, and hopefully we can see that from an enforcement side. Any comments? River Valley will be ongoing. Pine Hill, I think this is still something, uh, Council McCauley, John Eric, this goes back to signage issues or doing some things there with speed limits, comments? Yeah, That's Councilor, I never caught up with you for the exact details. I never got the details that you were looking for. Okay, so it's ongoing then. Okay. Okay, we'll pick it up in January. Um, traffic calming. Oh, this was, uh, we were going to get some additional supplies, Jamie, if you're on the call. I know we talked about ordering yep. a dozen or so of different yep. items that we would have. Yep. On hand. We have that. Yep. We have, we, we have, we just received them. Um, I am not putting them out now because it is winter. So they'll be out, put out, everything will be put out in the spring and I am collecting all of the ones that are in the road now that are, have either been made or run over five or six or seven times, um, put them all back together in the in the winter and put them back out in the spring. Okay. Or well, what we can do is decide on where we want them to go in the spring. I think to Council right. McCauley's point, we were trying to come up with something a little bit more, you know, having available supplies to do things with. Okay, we'll keep it open. Um, I think the crosswalk at Titcom and Merrimack. The only thing that came out of the last meeting was that we, there was a comment made about the vegetation still needing to be dealt with. I mean, I don't know what that looks like now going into the winter, but. Um, I was driving by and somebody was cutting some down. Yeah. Um, okay. So maybe um, let's take a look at that. We, we may be able to close this out. Okay. Um, I or it's more than vegetation. Is it someone's, the uh, people are still, still looking for the uh, flashing signal so well yeah um why don't we keep it open because it probably will come up and maybe we look at that as a as a spring or late winter um review does everybody agree definitely leave it open please yeah okay, okay. the mosley have sidewalk addition council wallace i'm not sure oh, we guys going to work on maybe doing some kind of concept plan for this Yes, we're having a um, a site visit tomorrow morning. Oh, great. So we'll so keep, keep it open and keep that on. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And um, to. So, uh, excuse me. Here. Excuse me. I, I'd like yes. to be involved. I didn't know anything about that. Um, I'd like to be involved, being that it's a, a road, please. Thank you. Short. Sure. Going to that? Uh, that that is Actually, myself. I apologize. I have to I have to handle a call, so I've got to bail on you. Okay, Sergeant. Thank you. All right. If I get back, I'll check in. Thank you. Oh, no, we're good. We're almost done. Um, <laughs> and then we had, uh, you know, council. I'm sorry. So were you guys all set, Jamie? You're going to connect so you can be part of that meeting? Yeah, I'll connect with John Eric. Yeah. Okay. In our office. okay. And then uh, the handicap sign at 12 Monroe. I'm not really quite sure. Um, I think it was going to public safety. J Councilor McCauley, is this something? being worked on there or is something we need to just just leave it in process signage issue yep leave it in process okay all right and then the summit street parking issue too i think that was another 
signage discussion. Yep, that was, that was approved by the council, so. Oh, okay. So I'm gonna close this, are we good? All righty. Does it up oh, the next one? I forgot we have three more. The crosswalk at High Street. Jamie, did we we had done a temporary situation there to see what would go on? Just Maybe keep on going. Is it there still? We keeping the barrel there? Nope. The barrel. The barrel. The barrel and the crosswalks. Everything will be removed. Okay. Um, and we'll put it back in the spring. Okay. Yeah, there's no flashing light there. It'll be a. Yeah. It'll, it'll be a. Um, Staunch it. Right. We didn't get any. Did anybody ever get any more feedback? I I never heard anything. But yeah, they liked it. They, they, they like wanted. It. Yeah, they wanted to draw attention to it. They did. So okay. The, okay. The barrel, okay. the barrel, and the and the ballard drew drew attention to it. So they're they're okay. Okay, that's good. Um, Parker Street at the rail trail. Councilor McCauley, anything uh, there? That's you? still open because John yeah. Eric haven't haven't caught up. Yeah. Okay. And then yeah, I mean, real, other... real quick, it, it does. We we can put a, a speed limit sign, uh, Jim. And um, you and I can. I'd like to finalize that with you, a sidewalk with you. Yeah, great. That'd be great. All right, I'll reach out to you. Thank All you. right, we'll put a speeding sign there, and the two of you will review. Thanks. Okay. And then the last one, the crosswalk at High and Myrtle. I don't. Same thing. Pardon me? Same thing. Leave it as Same in thing. process. Okay. In pro okay. Is this effective, guys, with me writing, keeping these things going in a list? I mean, I'm just trying to keep us in check with what we're doing and saying we're, you know. I, I think, I, I think, I think, it, I think it's good, but I, I'm feeling hard pressed that Andy Port has to leave because he has to host another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> appreciate that. Yeah, no, thank And sorry, Andy. Okay. All right, so without further ado, we'll need to adjourn and we will, um, happy holidays. We'll reconvene in January, folks. Bye-bye.